Thank you so much, Scott. We appreciate your talents and David Bouvet as well on percussion. Years ago, I had the opportunity to live with a Hindu family in Mumbai, India. I was traveling all around the world as a teacher and had opportunities to live with various different families during the court times of my travels. And this wonderful family had welcomed me into their home and this was going to be where I would reside during my time scheduled uh, in Mumbai. And so I got to participate with a lot of family activities, traditions, celebrations, and uh, great occasions. And one in particular, the young uh, boy of the family was preparing to get married and he was going to meet his fiance in an arranged marriage for the first time and spend about 15 minutes with her about a month before the wedding. I thought, wow, you're gonna see her for the first time. You're going to uh, visit with her for the very first time. What all will you say? What all you can ask her? Like, what's your favorite thing? And what do you like to do? And, and uh, what are your interests? And no, he said, what I'm going to ask is, are you willing to do your job? Are you willing to do your job? I said, that doesn't sound very romantic. Oh, but she's going to ask me the very same question. Are you willing to do your job? You see, when each person does their job, a marriage is successful and people begin to fall in love. In Western culture, he said, you all trip up, you stumble, you roll into love. You call it falling into love, but we begin to work the power and presence of love by taking responsibility first and foremost. And so we ask the all important question, are you ready to do your job? Well, today I've got an important question to ask each and every one of you. How are you creating a world that works for everyone and not just a few? A very important question. A question that we need to ask ourselves on a daily basis to say, you know, wait a minute, what am I doing that's creating a world that works not just for me alone, but for everyone? Because I live in a world that's designed to be harmonious and full of unity, oneness and harmony. Yet somehow the world around me creates all kinds of distractions for this. Creating, you may say, creating a world, what do you mean by this? Well, we are co-creators with the divine. But the question is, what are we creating? Because the world is shaped by the creative work that we do with this divine source. The intelligence of the universe, the one we call infinite possibilities, this that we call God. We are every day co-creating. Sometimes we don't realize the power we have to create the world that we so desire, that we'd love to experience. For each and every one of us is a creator and we each play a key role and you are important. Now, if no one has ever told you that, let me tell you today, you are important. You're very important in so many ways because each and every one of us makes a contribution to the whole. Some may say, well, wait a minute, I'm just me. I'm just someone, everyday Joe, you know, uh, really? Uh, am I that important? You see, even the smallest cog in the greatest of machines is important. Everything runs in, in sync with each other. And so it is in our world today that each and every one of us is valuable and important and are co-creators with the divine. And each and every one of us must do our part. The world is ever evolving and our reality is being shaped by our thoughts and our thoughts are shaping our actions and our actions are shaping this world around us. And we look today at the news. We look what's transpired in the last couple of weeks. Our hearts ache at the turmoil that we're experiencing. Our heart aches at the injustice and our heart aches at all of the hurt and the wounds that are being in experienced in our world today. This past week, I just put out a big hug to the world. I said, I'm sending the world a healing hug. Would you join me? I just wanted so badly just to reach around the world and hug everyone who's going through so much. 
in particular in our own communities and our own nation, to give a hug of love and to reach out to let's know that that love is that which would build bridges. You see, I want to do my part in creating a world that works not just for me, but for everyone. You see, this is what is really important. But it's the way that we think, it's the way that our thoughts are working that shape the world around us. And we are shaping the race consciousness, the societal consciousness, the cultural consciousness of our world. Now, you may be familiar with a lot of social influencers, people who are on Facebook, people who are on social media, trying to constantly influence the world, offering their insights, their suggestions, their talents, their skills, saying this is the coolest thing, this is the latest thing, this is what's hot, this is what's not, and so on, and being a social influencer. Well, let me tell you today, I want you to know that you are all spiritual influencers. That's right, spiritual influencers, because collectively we are shaping, we are influencing, we are molding and creating the consciousness of our culture and of our world, of our race, of our communities. I'm not talking about just racial consciousness, I'm talking about the, the whole human race coming together and the way we think and how we live and we act. Each and every one of us pays, plays a key part. So we are creating a world that works for everyone, not just a few. So what works for me, we have to remember, doesn't always work for others. Hmm, that's kind of strange a lot of times. Wait a minute, it's working for me, it's perfect for me, I love the way it all unfolds for me, but then we realize it doesn't always work for everyone else. You know, what works for one may not work for another. How about this example that, you know, what works for our taste buds may not always work for our stomach. Mushrooms are a classic example. That's something that tastes good, but some are poisonous and don't work so well with the stomach. We say, well, wait a minute, tastes good, uh, but it impacts the body in a way that's not always for the best. Another example of something that tastes good, but not great for the stomach are foods tainted with botulism. That's right, they don't taste bad. You don't always recognize it, but boy, does it hit the body. You see, what works for one may not work for the other. And we have to say, wait a minute, this is one body that I have and I need to work everything in conjunction. So not only does it taste good, it also has to feel good going down. It has to nurture and strengthen the body and reinforce it. We may look at things and say, but wait, I've got lots of thoughts and do lots of actions and they work, but, but whom does it work for? But whom does it, and for whom does it not work? Well, it works for me. We say, it works for me. This is the way I want to live my life. This is how I want to look at the world. This is how I want things to be. It works for me, and we have to be careful of something called me sickness. The French call or speak of this disease called la madalie du moi, meaning me sickness, a focus too much on me, a sickness about me, me. And you know what's all important is just me. Now, the disciples we read in the Bible were often challenged with this, troubled by this very disease, and they were too many times so concerned about themselves, they missed the point of the teaching of Jesus. They missed out on so much because it was all, how does this impact me? How does this work for me? What about me? And their perspective clouded their whole journey, and they were filled with the me sickness. So what happens when it doesn't work for everyone? What happens when things don't work in our world for everyone? You may say, well, it's like being in a boat and the boat is solid and great on my end and it's looking really fabulous and ready to sail and the other person on the opposite end of the boat may say, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. There's a hole on my end. Well, that hole is your problem because my end looks great and my end of the boat is dry and suddenly the boat starts to sink and water is filling into the entire boat and we're all sinking. We don't realize, wait a minute, we're all in the same boat. Wake up. We've got to realize we're all in the same boat. To do this, we must wish for another, what we wish for ourselves. To really create a world that works for everyone, not just a few, we must begin with this very concept that what we wish for someone else, we wish for ourselves. What we wish for ourselves, we wish for someone else. We must want for another what we want for ourselves. We must do for another what we would want to do for ourselves. Because the one thing we forget, the one thing we forget 
is that we are all one. There is no separation. Ephesians 4, 4 talks about it clearly in explaining to us there's just one body, one spirit, speaking of the oneness of the divine within us, that we all form this one body. We all form this one spirit. Jesus wanted us to understand this, and he taught it over and over again, but so many had an inability to hear this lesson and to understand it. There is one divine source, and we all came from that same divine source. Yet the world teaches us constantly that this is not like that. Constantly highlighting differences. Constantly hiding, highlighting all the divisions and separations. And that this should not mix with that, and that does not go with this. And so we constantly forget the fact that we are all coming from one, but unique expressions of the one. Each one bringing our uniqueness, yet there is no separation in it. I'm not separate from you. I may be different. I may be a white male and you may be a person of a color or a person of another gender or sexual identity or whatever it may be. We may look at all these differences that we want to tag, but there is no separation. We're all one. So what we have to understand is as we fall into the belief that somehow we're separate from one another, this is a very tool of destruction. It destroys the very understanding of spiritual truth that needs to be alive within us. The truth of oneness, the truth of unity, the truth of living in harmony with one another, being in sync with one another, and the understanding what this all means and how it works, yet we so often are taught this separation idea. Think about this. You own a house. There's one house. But what happens when the foundation begins to say, I want to act separate from the walls of your house. And the walls say, I want to act separately from the roof. And the windows and the doors say, no, 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 we're not all collaborating on this. We want to act separately too. Well, what happens is you've got a house that's ready to cave in. Separation thinking in any context is allowing us to experience division and encouraging it. And when we think divisively or divisively, we begin to create our own destruction. You know, to tear down a house, what happens first? They begin to destroy the structural unity. To tear apart a world, the carnal mind, the error thinking wants to go quickly to find those places where we can break down the structural unity the sense of harmony and oneness in our communities and our world. So let's remove the support beams, we might say, as we're beginning to tear down a house. Let's begin to tear down that which would unite or hold a structure together. Let's remove it section by section and remove the supporting walls. And what happens is the house easily falls down and crumbles. A nation divided is equally conquered. And so a world that is divided surrenders its strength and its structural unity and is easily destroyed. Humanity divided will welcome its own destruction. This today, what we're experiencing in our world is a call for us to awaken up to the power of oneness, the power of unity, the power of being fully aware that we do not live separate from anyone any country, any culture, any being, any living creature, we are all one. Now we have welcomed racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, ageism, and on goes the list. They're all perfect examples of these thought processes that, have birthed in, that are birthed in separation thinking. You see, the thoughts and feelings about one another shape the destiny of our world. And when we begin to say, I'm not connected, I'm not part of you, I'm not interested in you, this works for me, but if I don't care if it doesn't work for you, what we create is a house that begins to crumble and destruction happens within our world. You possess everything in this world through the right of consciousness, how we think. That's right. Everything that you possess is based in our thought process. All around us, we may think of all oh, this beautiful structure we're in, the furniture around us, your home. You realize that everything began with a thought. Someone began to imagine, visualize. A thought begins everything. And so we possess everything through right consciousness or the right of consciousness. So how we think about things or one another, quite often it may be, 
Thoughts of jealousy rise up. We're envious of one another, jealous of what's going on or a person's success or the things that they have and that you don't have. And you may begin to think, well, they don't deserve this. They haven't worked like I have. I work for it. They shouldn't go. They should have to go through the things I went through. They don't deserve an easy path. Everyone needs to suffer. Everyone needs to go through the hardships. I got here the hard way. There should be no easy way for others. We hear people say that. People thinking then that it's constantly not about what works and beautifully together in a harmonious sense of unity. But again, it worked for me and Dagnabbit, I'm not gonna help out or assist or anyone else. They've gotta find their own way for it to work. You see, as we think this way, we open the doors to be robbed of our own true treasure, our greatest strength, our oneness, you see all kinds of chaos, turmoil, and destruction going on in our world today. But before this, there was already chaos, turmoil, and destruction. It was going on inside us. The ugliness of racism, separation thinking, were robbing us well before the thief ever began to rob us today. Before we were experiencing the destruction that's going on, the random violence going on, there was already a destruction and a violence within our own consciousness and our own spirit. Before the other thief can rob us, we've already been robbed ourselves. Think about that. It's already happened within us, and now we're seeing it manifesting outside of us. Remember, there's always an inner thief before an outer one appears. You're feeling that there's some injustice and someone's creating some injustice. It may come from the injustice that we've been experiencing within our own life. Something going on, the inner problem going on before the very outer one appears within our lives. So let me offer you this. Don't deprive anyone of their rights, their liberties, their freedoms, the opportunity for joy and happiness. If you do, you simply deprive yourself. We're all in the same boat. Because when the ship comes in for your friend, it also comes in for you when we understand that very concept, that very cliched phrase, it paints a word picture for us. That when blessings are coming for one, they're also coming in for us. And what we think about, believe about ourselves, we must think and believe about for another. For the emotions we embrace about ourselves, we must embrace for one another. Have we forgotten? Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. This speaks of this wonderful power of our connectedness. For what I wish for others, I wish for myself. And what I wish for myself, I wish for another. And you've been given this great power in the world to treat others the way you would like to be treated. Isn't that amazing? Each and every day we could say, how would I like to be treated? Well, let me treat others. Let me demonstrate it. Let me show it. Let me think about it. Let me hold in consciousness. Let it be now seen and revealed in my actions. This is how I'd like to be treated. You want someone to hold the door open for you when you come into the store? Hold the door for someone else. You want someone to say good morning to you? Say good morning to them. You want someone to be kind and considerate or generous or sharing? Well, do those things yourself. Do unto others exactly what you would want done unto you. You see what happens then when we do this, we are removing all the barriers to our own personal success. These barriers that come into our life that hinder us from our greatest achievements are these negative things that we wish on others. That's right. Now, I understand you may be angry and you may be hurt. You at times can be mad and upset about what others, what others do or what they don't do. But your judgments become barriers to your own personal success, your own success in your life. These are the impediments in your own way to your personal achievements. Because when you entertain these negative states of mind, you are actually hurting and injuring yourself because you are thinking and feeling it. That's right. You held that anger in thought. You held that judgment in thought. 
you felt it. What happens is that what we do for ourselves, we do for one another, and what we wish for others is coming back to us just the same. For when we give and what we give to another, we're actually giving to ourselves. So always make this special point each and every day, wherever you may go, to bless the other person and to rejoice in their prosperity and success, to release all kinds of sense of competition and some sort of comparisons, but rejoice in the sense of someone else's great successes in this world and rejoice in some way knowing that it's there for you too. And the same way as you share, you demonstrate in the way that you'd like to be treated and sharing and generosity coming to you. So it is that we build this world that we want, and we do it together. So let me ask you this today, what changes are you prepared to make to create success in the world? What self-focused beliefs, all about me, 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 are you willing to change? What thoughts have we entertained that we may need to release and let go of? What thoughts of evil for others? How many times have we said, dang, I'd like to kill that person. I get so upset. I'm so angry. I'd like to see harm come to them. I want revenge. We've embraced all this kind of language and thinking and be careful what we speak because what we're speaking is coming back to us because we are living in a world of one. The scripture says, cast your bread upon the waters and it will come back to you. Be careful what you're putting out. It's coming right back to you because we live in a world of cyclical energy that's moving that which we put out, we attract right back. It's coming right back to us in this wonderful cycle. What negative ideas have you embraced? What feelings have you held in your heart and life? What have you posted on Facebook that says, this person's an idiot, I can't stand them. How many times have you attacked someone? How many times have you said, posted some picture of some politician and said, they're a horrible person? You know, you all may be mad, I get this. We all may be angry, I get this. But be careful that what we say to one another, because we've lost the sense of oneness, we think we have the freedom to speak out ill for one another, realize without forgetting it comes right back to us because we live in one world and we're all connected. And the Spirit of God is calling us to be awakened to the awareness that we are part of one family. We then need to awaken to this wonderful truth that what we can do is begin to share positive energy and to shape the world that then moves and creates a world that's for our highest and best and everyone else's as well. The energy begins to move within us through this power of love and it begins to move the mechanics of the universe. That's right. Energy begins to move and move and begin. It's a spiral in such a wonderful way that it begins to move in the very mechanics of everything of life around us. Now they tell us that the more you put your body in motion, the more energy you will have. A lot of people say, wait, wait a minute, I have no energy. I just wanna sit on the couch, eat potato chips, waste the day away. I just don't have any energy. The real truth is though, when you invest energy and you get out and do exercise, you begin to create more energy. When you begin to suddenly give energy, energy begins to build within you and the world. And so it is when we're investing in the energy of an idea, we find the idea begins to take off on itself and it grows and evolves. So we find all these concepts of energy beginning to, once put into place, begin to multiply and grow. And that's the energy of love. When we put it into place, it's gonna multiply and it's gonna grow in our world. If you want more energy, use the energy you have. If you want more love, share the energy of love that you have. Let's create more energy. Let's tune into our up super attractive power. Let's begin to see ourselves as super attractors. That's right, attractors of the good. For that which we are resonating within us, we attract more of. So let's begin to say, I'm going to create a world that works for everyone, not just a few. I'm going to begin with the energy of love vibrating alive within me. And I'm going to be a super attractor of the good. For we know that likes attract likes. And the more that I give out of love, the more that love comes back to me. 
the more that I invest in this, the more I receive back. So say this with me. Join with me out there in uh, Facebook land, shall we say? Say this with me. I am what I desire. I am what I desire. I am it now. I am it now. I am attracting more of what I desire. I'm attracting more of what I desire. My desires are for the highest and best. My desires are for the highest and best. For everyone. The creative energy of love we invest in this world is going to begin to shape it and mold it. Unite us. Pull us together. It's time to set aside all kinds of judgments. Just begin to awaken the energy of love. Let it rise, let it rise, let it build, let it begin to create this wonderful momentum, momentum that keeps rolling on and going on. For as we love the world around you, you'll find the world around you loving you right back. So there are many questions we could ask one another in this world today. There is a marriage about to take place. It's the marriage of the creative work of knowing and feeling in our lives. And the big question is, are you prepared to do your job? That may not sound very sexy or romantic, may not sound very uh, thought provoking, but it's the great question we have to ask. There is a world to be created where heaven and earth come together. There is a world that is described of an ancient truth that's available to us when we awaken the very power of the divine, of the great love at work within us, and bring and manifest it into the physical, into the world of today. Bring this marriage where we unite the two together. And as we do for this to happen, we have to answer the question ourselves. Am I prepared to do my job? And that is to do the creative work. Work with the divine presence within your heart and life each and every day. Demonstrate a love for each and every one that unites us and weaves together the very threads of unity to, in our hearts and our lives. For we're here to create a world that works for everyone, not just a few. And we're invited to do our part in creating it, not just for ourselves, but creating a world that is a sense of the power and blessing of being one, working for the greater good of each and every one. And so it is. Amen.